Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first in a new series for JHSM, Innovators and Entrepreneurs, a series sponsored by Allrig USA and Jan Pro Detroit. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. Um, we have some great upcoming programming offerings that we hope you will join us for and you can see them right there on your screen as well. And if you wish to register for these programs, please visit www.mishjewishhistory.org slash calendar to do so. Additionally, if you have been enjoying all of the Zoom programs that we have been putting on for the last year, we hope you will consider supporting JHSM. And you can do this by visiting www.mishjewishhistory dot org slash donate. And as I said before, we are very excited about this new series that begins tonight, Innovators and Entrepreneurs. And our first interview for this series is Dennis Bernard, who we are very excited to have with us tonight. Dennis is the founder of Bernard Financial, which he founded in 1991, and it has since then grown to be the largest commercial banking firm in Michigan. A devoted husband and father to three children, he has also won numerous awards for his community support as well his, as his financial involvement. He currently serves as the president of the Jewish Foundation of Metropolitan Detroit. And now I'm going to hand it over to two of our sponsors from JanPro, Jared Rothberger, and from Allrig, Gabriel Shookman, to run tonight's interview portion. And if any of you wish to ask any questions to Dennis at the end of our program, please submit them via the chat feature at, on your Zoom screen, and I will moderate that conversation for us as well. And now to Gabe, Jared, and Dennis. There we go. All right, welcome everybody. Um, am I get my video, Kara? Oh, I'm gonna go without video. Uh, welcome everybody and Your thank video you. video should be able to turn on now, sorry about that. No problem. Oh, there you go. Sure. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. <laughs> there, there you go. There we go. First of all, I just have to I have to thank Kara and and just say I am I was worried Kara and I were going to have the same hairstyles tonight. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Jared. Good to see uh, you as always. Go absolutely good to see you too. Very looking forward to this interview. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Jewish Historical Society of Michigan. Uh, Gabe and I are thrilled to be partnering with you and uh, working to bring the Innovators and Entrepreneurs series um, and uh, talking to some very interesting Jewish entrepreneurs in the community and uh, very excited to start with Dennis. Um, you know, just very quickly, uh, for those that, that don't know, my name is Jared Rothberger. Uh, I'm the owner of JanPro. Uh, Detroit. We are a commercial cleaning and janitorial service, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Gabe to introduce himself, and then we'll get started with the interview. Hi, Gabe Shuckman with uh, Allrig USA. We're a development firm based out of uh, Bingham Farms. We uh, own an office and medical building throughout Metro Detroit, and then um, also develop uh, retail centers throughout the, uh, throughout the country. And uh, I'm pleased to uh, be friends with Dennis for many, many years. So, I mean, there's a lot of connections. So, you know, connection number one. So my mom, Rivka Shookman, has been a teacher at Hillel Day School for, wow, 1989. Dennis, do the math for me. You're good at this stuff. Ah, <laughs> 32 years. 32 years. Thank you very much. So she's been, she's been at, at uh, Hillel Day School 32 years. Right out of college. Not, exactly. She was still in college, actually. <laughs> And I don't want to call her her favorite student, but I want to say it was definitely in the highest person. I don't want to offend anybody, but your oldest son, Joshua, is one of her favorite students of all time. So I've known you for many, many years. 
But before we kind of, you know, jump into the family relationships and all that stuff, and Josh is with you, Bernard Financial now. So I'd love for you to give a little bit of, you know, if you don't mind, give us a quick background about, you know, Bernard Financial and how you got started. And, you know, we could talk a little bit about Jewish community and everything else. So I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Gabriel. And, and I really do appreciate, this is kind of nice because being a transplant and coming to Detroit in 1986 from Cleveland, which I'll touch on in a, in, in a few minutes, um, being the first speaker in the entrep for entrepreneurial for JHSM, now I feel like I'm truly an official Detroiter, <laughs> even though I've been involved in so many, you know, in, in so much of the resurrection of downtown and, and the CPT and, and in the uh, in foundations and organizations. Now I know I'm part of the historical nature of Detroit. So I, I, I appreciate it. Um, Bernard, I, the boring part is Bernard Financial Group. I started Bernard Financial Group in 1991. We're a commercial mortgage banking firm. And um, much to the surprise of both my mother and mother-in-law, we did grow to become Michigan's largest commercial mortgage banking firm. Uh, I wasn't surprised that my mother-in-law was, was surprised, but I was a little upset that my mother was so surprised. But being a typical good Jewish, mother, good Jewish mother, as I became successful years ago, when I, I, I was one of my one of the nicest awards I ever got was from the governor. I was given the governor's volunteer of the year award, which was volunteer service award, which was very touching. My mother got a chance to meet the governor, and um, Governor Granholm was very kind and said such nice things about. And the only thing my mother could say of blessed memory could say was. You couldn't have done this when you lit, you know, when you when you were growing up. You had to eat my heart out. So, <laughs> I guess that's my way of saying whether it's Jewish mothers from Detroit or from Cleveland, everything's the same. But so Bernard Financial Group is now second generation. My son Joshua, after five years of uh, uh, being in New York and Wall Street, has joined us. So we're now a generational business, and that's very exciting. And it's also given me an opportunity to be very involved in community. I grew up in, in Cleveland, which again, that's where Gabe and I overlapped. And you know, most people think I moved to Detroit back in 1986 to follow uh, and pursue my lovely bride-to-be, Hadass, who we've now been married, uh, uh, we've now been married uh, uh, 32 years. Um, uh, and, and everybody, I, I did tell everybody I moved up for her, but the real reason I moved up was I'm a football fan. And after all those years of being a fan of the Browns and having all those heartbreaks, I decided I'd move to a city where I would no longer have football heartbreaks and I could, I, I, I could enjoy a, a winning football team. But my two lifelong football teams are the only two 0 and 16 football teams. And so that, and, 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 the only, and, and only two out of the four cities that have never been to the Super Bowl. So it shows you the commonality between Cleveland and Detroit. When I grew up in Cleveland, I was very involved in the community. I was in, I, I was in youth groups where I did. Uh, actually, that's where I met um, uh, Hadass, Hadassla. Initially, I, I was an advisor and, and she was a youth group. Nothing happened, it was okay. But we got to know each other and later, obviously, uh, we met later on. Uh, and we've been, we, we fell in love. I pursued her up. I did pursue her up here um, in 1986, in June 1st of 86, and we got married in 88. When I moved up here, it was because of a business opportunity. I was working for a commercial mortgage banking firm in Cleveland, and I really was involved in the young leadership group in Cleveland. And I didn't know anybody really outside of Hadass and her family when I moved up here, and I didn't know you know, where to go and, and to meet people. So I actually reached out from being involved in Federation Cleveland, I reached out to the Federation of Detroit. And the very first event was their summer annual meeting. And the very first night I came to town, I went to the annual meeting and not knowing anybody, I went up and got a, uh, I went to the bar to stand and, you know, get a cocktail. And I started talking to a couple of knuckleheads in front of me. And they were Richard Broder and Bill Mazur, who have now been my very close friends for uh, 35 years now. And these two guys helped introduce me to Detroit. And I found out that the, 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 the warmth of the Detroit community, Jewish community was incredible. They wanted to take me to places in the old neighborhood. 
which were, if I closed my eyes, were like being in, in, in the old neighborhood in Cleveland. The same kind of delis, the same kind of uh, stores, the same kind of uh, places where, where, where they grow up. And the same, so that's really how I got involved. I continue to get involved in Federation and now I'm president of the United Jewish Foundation. So Gabe, does that give you a little bit of the history of, of uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. So I'll tell you, so you've had an in, incredible influence on my life. And so we've done a lot of business together. We've had incredible business experiences together and everything else. Put that aside. But I, you know, you know, when I joined NOLA and still to this day, a lot of our golf rounds were me, you and Steve Margolin. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we played, we, we have to, we have to admit to everybody we played for a lot of money. Right, it was big money. What, what were we usually playing for, Dennis? What kind of what was the um, what was what was the what was the usual bet? We just we have to tell everybody to come clean right now. Do you do, we, do you want to share it? No, I'm I, I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> so we usually pay for drachmas, right? Drachmas is the and old. We game. would play. I I I decided. Steve was a big uh, gambler. Many of you know Steve Margo, and just really a beautiful, beautiful human being involved in. in, in the community forever, but Steve's not a gambler, and, my, and Gabriel and I like to gamble a little bit. So on the first hole, we tee off, and I go to Gabe, our usual bet. And he said, "Sure." I said, "So seven, uh, so ten thousand a hole," and and poor Steve didn't know what to say, and we we just said, "So obviously you're in." Steve. And I started keeping score, and I would tell him on the fifth hole, he's down fifty thousand. And he's like not knowing what, what it was. But our normal bet was 50,000 drachmas, which is a long ago retired Greek, um, uh, uh, you know, Greek, Greek uh, coin. It's so like the old shekel. It's like basically, <laughs> yeah, it's the old shekel. So basically 10,000 drachmas is somewhere around 57 cents today. <laughs> but we didn't bother to tell Steve that until the 16th hole. But so, but so that was a fun. That, that was always funny. But but the beauty of golfing with Steve and Dennis is, you know, so one, you know, one, Dennis, your relationship with your kids. That's like the one thing that's just always, you know, I've always looked up to is your incredible relationship with your three kids. You know, just you know how cl how close you are with them, how involved you are with them, and really, what was incredible to me this summer, you invited us to go, you know, water skiing with you, jet skiing with, you know, and, and doing all the all the boat stuff, you know, boat stuff with you. This, and you're. And you know how you know how Josh was sharing stories from his childhood growing up. We used to do this jump and that jump, and and it was just, it was just I've always known how close you are with your kids, but you can really really see it. So that, that was one thing that always amazed me. Your incredible golf game, but that goes you know that that that's that, that that's that's easy, but your involvement in philanthropic causes and charities. So when I started golfing with you guys, I really didn't have any involvement in any you know any philanthropic causes. Any, you know any really anything. You know I was you know I was working. I was you know I was getting going in my career. And, you know, after that, I got involved in Hillel Day School, you know, started getting involved in University of Michigan and, and a lot of different things. So I really owe a tremendous amount of debt, gratitude, whatever you want to call it to you and obviously to Steve as well for just, you know, opening my mind of the importance of giving back to the community. And, you know, whenever I, you know, whenever, whenever we talk, you know, you're always, you know, talking about, you know, going to Israel and, you know, and doing stuff with, you know, with Lester and, you know, Federation and all that stuff. So I'd, I'd love to... If you, if you don't mind sharing that a little bit, because I know that's the stuff that really drives you. I know the business stuff is secondary, but I'd love to hear, you know, you know, about your, you know, about the stuff you're working on these days. That'd be great. You know, that very kind of you and, and anybody, anybody who knows me knows my, 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 my biggest thrill and accomplishment in life is that my three grown children call or text me every day. And they did this through when they were away from college or overseas or whatever. I'm fully blessed. I have an amazing fabulous daughter-in-law, uh, Stacy, And uh, I got her up to two times, two to three times a week. I'm going to get her every day like that. <laughs> but coming from Cleveland and then even more so in Detroit, you we have a burden. This is such a dynamic, caring community. It's different. I've had, my business has taken me all over the country. I sit on several national philanthropic boards. And so I hear about other places. But cities like Cleveland and Detroit have such legacies of taking care of our community. And that's the, both in the general community, but really in the Jewish community. We truly have a dynamic, caring community. But along with that comes a responsibility. We need to carry it on. We can't be the generation, or we can't let our children's generation be the one that stops giving back. So you do, you know, 
growing up in, 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 in Cleveland and then really my formative years here, Gabriel, you have that, that, that need to contribute and give back because so many people before us, and that's what's great about the historical uh, Jewish Historical Society is that it, that it documents all these people. And ever since I became president of the, uh, Matt, Matt Lester, my dear friend, Matt Lester, and great co-partner, ridiculously wonderful co-partner, um, what, what, true, true visionary. Um, we have a lot of fun bouncing ideas off each other. But we've, we, we, we've been, so many people who came a generation or even two generations before us has reached out to us to support us. And kind of, you know, Gabriel, we look forward to doing that to you and to your children and Jared to your children as they take leadership roles in the community and they take on. on. Um, Mickey Madden sent um, a really sweet note of when I was first inducted uh, uh, as president of the Young Adult Division in 1988. Somehow he had, you know, during COVID and you're going through all your clippings, he had a clipping because it had a picture in another on the Jewish news of, of, of me becoming president, but it also had uh, Mickey for, you know, showing past presidents. And he showed me that the same challenge, and he, he I followed Mickey as past president of, of the Young Adult Division of Nam Jen. He was a, he was a president of the United Jewish Foundation too. And the same goals that Matt and I outlined in 2021 for our presidency was the same ones Mickey were doing in 1994. Awesome. So it shows you the names might change, but the challenges, senior, at risk, um, uh, uh, our schools, education, camp, involvement, Back then, they were terrified of the next generation uh, assimilating. So now we're worried about the next generation assimilating. So it, it, it gets passed on. When I was young, everybody needs a role model. And you need to pick a better one if I'm yours. But <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that later. But everybody needs a role model, right, Jared? And Absolutely. my role model was my great uncle, Louis Fox, who my, my middle son, um, Aaron Love is named after. And uh, he was very involved in Baltimore, which is a very similar city, Jewish community like Cleveland, Detroit. And he taught me that life, you need to make your life like a three-legged stool. It's gotta be family, foundation, and uh, family, community, and business. And then legs have to be equal or it's gonna tip over. And he drove this into me. So I've been very fortunate to uh, be a part of so many uh, of our agencies here in town, whether it be vocational service or, 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 or Jewish vocational service or JARC or Hillel or, 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 or the, diff uh, the other different uh, Yeshiva Beth Yudah, uh, Frankel Academy, or whether it's been the synagogues. I think Hadass has made me be a capital contributor to four synagogues. I'm sure there'll be a fifth in her future. Um, there already is, we spoke earlier. There, there is a fifth, just to let you know. <laughs> But it's important. But but it's in, it's important to create. What makes us different from transient cities here in Detroit, I've noticed, cities that are transient like L.A. or San Francisco or or, or or a Dallas or an Atlanta where people come and go, is we plant roots. And even someone who's a transplant, like me, I am part of the community. But my roots now go deep here, and I think that's part of the magic of Detroit because when your roots are here. You, you help other people, it just becomes part of your nature. So um, whether it's the incredible work that Family Service does or Yad Ezra does or, or whatever, you wanna be a part of that. So I've been very fortunate through my rise through Federation and Foundation to, to serve on several agencies and school boards and whatnot. And um, at Asalan, I've been very fortunate to contribute to a lot. But it, the other thing is selfishly, Gabriel, I want to do it so my children can see it, so they can see and carry it on, because otherwise it would just be selfish of us, because that's our legacy, right? You know, I talked about how important it was that we fo that I followed, you followed, Jared, you followed those who came before us to keep such an incredible community. We got to do the same thing. So I'd like to I'd like to jump on that real quick because. You know, I, I don't, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. I know you and Gabe know each other very well. And, uh, you know, I only know you by reputation. And 
Um, you know, I've obviously heard wonderful things. So I guess my my question is, what advice would you give to someone who wants to follow in that path? For someone who wants to, you know, get involved and and be a part of the community and, you know, give back. You know, people say all the time, you know, you got to be a Detroiter to know Detroiter. You've got to, you know, this and that. I'm sorry, I didn't buy that. And I know, and I know from my own experience and others, Jared, this community is so hungry for people who care because that's part of our fabric. So that, that's a commonality. So find something where, and I, I tell younger people that I mentor all the time, find out what you're passionate about. But us and I are passionate about at-risk individuals, people with developmental disabilities, kind of elders, at-risk elderly, at-risk youth. That became our passion. So those were, I, I, I reached out to agencies that were doing that and they were thrilled to have our involvement. And this was even before we could write any substantial kind of uh, you know, philanthropic support. They just wanted our time, our expertise, our passion, our commitment. And from there, I made friends who then said, hey, you know what, let me introduce you to some, some things. Some things were interesting. Like my friend Jim Bellinson has introduced me to certain things around town that are non-Jewish, but are very important for our community to support, like Brilliant Detroit and things like that. Matt, my partner, Matt Lester, same thing. I introduced Matt to things. And so Jared, you get involved, you just ask. And if they don't say yes the first time, say it the second time. And then they start with something. And when they see that you're willing to follow through with it, they give you something to do and you meet incredible people. And then I can't say, and, and, and you referenced this earlier, anytime you go, to, you go to Israel on a Federation mission, and believe it or not, uh, Matt and I were with Steve Ingber today, looking over, we can't wait for COVID to be over. It's, it will be, we're gonna start traveling soon. Federation has 19 missions, ranging from everything from huge to, to 10 people and everything in between, young, old, families, couples, singles, whatever. You go, you're gonna make lifelong friends. Some of my dearest and closest friends are people when I first moved to town or started uh, or different stages of our lives, we went on couples missions to Israel. We made lifelong friends and became involved in other parts of the community. You really want to get involved, go on a Federation mission, meet people, find things. you go, They're going to want to do things with you because you're. we've met a few times. You're a fun guy and, and you've worked hard. You've built a business. You've got it growing. Our Jewish agencies and Philanthropic agencies in town are hungry for guys like you, not for you, Gabe, but for him. <laughs> so, so Dennis, one of the you know, so you know, obviously we do a lot of we do a lot of work together. And one of my biggest concerns, um, as me and Carol were deciding, we're gonna you know, as we, were, as we started, we were gonna stay in Detroit or connected to Detroit. There was no chance we were leaving. But as we started, you know, you know, raising our you know, started having kids, raising a family, is you know, what's you know, is it attractive? for our kids to stay here, right? Are they gonna to wanna to stay in Detroit, right? And you've done a lot of work both all throughout the state of Michigan, but you've been very involved in the city of Detroit. So one of, one of the things that I think is very, very exciting is everything going on in the city of Detroit and you know, love to get your viewpoint of what's going on, how's COVID gonna impact it, not impact it, you know, just you know, what, what, what's the outlook look like? So I'm, Cause I'm excited my kids have an urban core to go to as they you know, finish college and and hopefully decide to stay here. So what's your, what, what do you, you know, say? I, I would have 10, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, during the great recession, I would have bet not just drachmas, but real money that my children wouldn't end up here. Right. We, you know, Michigan, Michigan as general and Southeastern Michigan were not in good shape. The city of Detroit was not in good shape. And fortunately, we had some visionary leaders, um, several, but Dan Gilbert really, one of, you know, one of our great leaders and visionaries, and was willing to commit time, money, expertise, vision. And he started to, to create something that would attract young people. Young people don't want to live in uh, suburbia. No. It's, 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 it, you know, that, that's for when we start raising, you know, raising kids. That's when we start to become our parents and suddenly realize, oh my God, I turned into my dad. Um, <laughs> like those commercials, yeah, <laughs> suddenly my dad. Um, uh, but 
now that we start having a true CBD in downtown and urban living, and then you've seen it also in other areas. Look at look at you know Royal Oak. You know what the so the, the the town came back, but now there's really more urban living in Royal Oak and Ferndale and other and and in other parts of town. But the CBD and the city of Detroit, that was really important. So that's bringing back younger people. Our firm's been very fortunate. We've done over two and a half billion dollars of uh, commercial mortgages and development alone in the city of Detroit. And we, we, we noticed two things when we financed a lot of these multifamilies. A lot of them are young people, but they're also 25, 30% of every complex seems to also be empty nesters that craved and never had an, ex, uh, an urban experience living in Detroit and they're moving down there. Now, 12 years after the Great Recession, I have one son who moved back from New York and who's, who's my daughter-in-law grew up in, in Toronto and lived in New York. And now she enjoys Detroit and they lived in the city. I have a daughter who's graduating college. I never thought she would come back. She's, she's interviewing in Detroit. That's amazing. That's to awesome. come back to Detroit. And why? And we, so therefore we have to make sure anybody who doesn't think that the vibrancy of the, of the city of Detroit isn't important. We may not live there. We may have to support it. We may have to have programming for it. You may not want to be, you know, why would I belong to the well or support the well or the Jewish synagogue in Detroit and things like that? It's not for yourself. It's for our community and it's for our youth to bring our youth back because we've, we've lost a generation and a half. Detroit, Cleveland, these Midwest cities, we lost a generation and a half and we became a top heavy age-wise city and we were losing people. And now we're getting our, our kids to come back. We got to get them involved. Jared, we got to make, we, in fact, Matt and I just talked about this today. We have to make Federation more accepting and opening of these young kids and getting them involved right away. So they start to be feeling part of the fabric. And so in Detroit, we're gonna find out the comeback of the city was real. There were restaurants, there were nightclubs, there were things that were opening when I would, they would start to open when I was getting up to urinate for the first time in the middle of the night. Things that were just, you know, cl clubs, cl <laughs> don't laugh. You're both old, you guys are both old enough. You were asleep before half of these clubs are opening up. And our kids were going I'm to- I'm not disagreeing with you, Dennis. I'm not. Because, you know- I'm waking up also these days. It's, it happens to all of us, don't worry. Right. You're not alone. You're not alone. I'm with right. you. I'm with you. So we, 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 we're now, we, we need to continue to, find that fine line and help our governor find that fine line of being COVID and protection and not letting the, the entertainment, nightlife and vibrancy of Detroit die because it was still young and on the vine. We got to make sure, and I, I encourage everyone, everyone who's on, 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 on this webcast right now, that when they start opening up restaurants again in the city, please go down there. Absolutely. He, he, please go down there. Go. They need to survive, and not necessarily for us. We can all go to dinners out here in the suburbs, but when our children look to come back to town, whether it's right after college or five or six or seven or eight years or when they want to settle here, that's important to that generation, and we need to have that vibrant city. So we're gonna we're gonna find out, but we need to help our governor find that fine line. It's not easy for her. You know, I'll, I'll make a comment, Jerry. Let me know if, and run me if I'm wrong here. But I, I really think, you You're know, no, <laughs> you know what? That's, I'm used to that. But <laughs> I just figured I'd, I'd save. No, no, it's okay. Time, okay. I'm, 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 I'm used to that. I'm used to that with my older brother. So I'm used to I'm used to hearing how wrong I am all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the um, I, I really think people are going to go back. So you know, I, I have some clients in town today, and you know, we we uh, they're staying in Birmingham. Um, but there was, it seems like there's activity coming back already. And I think, I think there's this pent up demand and Detroit was, was such an incredible comeback story. And I think it's going to explode. So hundred percent, we got to support Detroit, support all the restaurants there, but I have a really, really good feeling that we're going to see something very, very special 
you know, coming out of, you know, coming out of Detroit this summer. The, the one thing that I would add, and this is one of the questions that we had from, um, from some of the attendees, you know, I think that one of the cool things about Detroit is because, you know, we lost that generation and a half. There's a great opportunity here for young entrepreneurs or all entrepreneurs. Yep. And, you know, and Dennis, what I've, you know, you know, it seems, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, that, you know, you've, you've always, you know, you know, worked with everybody, right? You've always worked with, you know, the young, you know, the young real estate folks that were just kind of starting, obviously to the, you know, seasoned veterans that you've always, you've worked with everybody. You've always opened your door to everybody. Um, but what's, but I, you know, Detroit is just, is a very special place. Detroit, Metro Detroit is a very special place, but I think it's like a really cool spot if you're an entrepreneur, young or old, but you know, young entrepreneur, because it's kind of like a fertile ground. You can kind of just, you know, kind of, it's open to it, right? And what people do you, don't what do you realize, yeah. people don't realize Detroit has, uh, historically has been a, a city of entrepreneurs. Where if, if, if you look at the businesses, sure, a, look at the generations, and especially in our, our Jewish community, in the auto industry, whether it was dealerships or, or, or OEMs or suppliers or whatever. Look, look, at, look at all the, so we have a history of being entrepreneurs. Why? You know what? Because so many times we're overlooked by some of the other more cosmopolitan cities. So when you're here, that breeds, that breeds you know, I, I, I don't like to quote, but Detroit versus everybody. It really is, we have that mentality and that's great for an entrepreneur. That's what an entrepreneur needs to do. They need to see something that others aren't doing and to butt their head against it to make it happen until they are successful and they will be. But look at the kind of entrepreneurs we've, we've had in this town, in all kinds of industries, in real estate, in, in auto, in technology, in look at in, 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 in uh, residential mortgages. We have two we, 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 we have two of the four largest uh, residential mortgage companies uh, in America here. And, and three out of the, the top 10. Might even be four out of the top, four out of the top 10. So right. this is a town where it doesn't take a lot of money to get started because it's not like trying to go out to San Francisco. You have universities like Michigan, University of Michigan and Michigan State and Oakland University and Wayne State that are producing, and others, of course, that are producing really good young tech, really good young tech. So you can do it here and you can get your start here. And here's the other thing. There's a lot of venture capital that's come out of here. Yeah. We, 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 the state used to lag in venture capital money but they got smart. There's a lot of venture capital money available to help entrepreneurs start their businesses. Here in Detroit, it's less expensive than being on the coast. So we're, we see a proliferation. The problem was in the past, Gabe, they'd start getting going. They couldn't access venture capital and that venture capital would come from the coast and they would leave both for the venture capital money, right. the private equity money and for lifestyle. But if now we have a vibrant, more urban uh, environment. And now we do have coupled with, with, with private equity and, 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 and venture capital. We're, we're gonna keep them. Great place to start. Yeah. And if you fail, you can move back in with your in-laws. <laughs> For sure. And I, uh, I think I'll, I'll have to talk to my wife about that. I don't know if she- <laughs> <laughs> I, I also, I wanna take this, uh, this quick moment to also give a plug for uh, Hebrew Free Loan. I mean, great organization, great opportunity. Um, and, you know, that that's an organization that is so, I mean, one of their missions is to give away money and to help, you know, Jewish entrepreneurs. Um, and it's, I mean, great organization, great opportunity uh, to go along with all the venture and, and, you know, everything else that's going on. Um, I was I was actually pretty amazed, you know, when I was starting my business that, um, you know, the access to money and the access to help and mentorship. And I mean, it's just a great, great community to start and grow a business. Maybe it's maybe it's it's a great shout out to Hebrew Free Loan. They're, they're special. They really are. But maybe it's because of the Midwest, 
Maybe it's because of, 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 of the fabric of our community. But to, to, to both of your points, there's so many people who want to mentor and pass on young entrepreneurs in this town. And I know there's nothing, you know, look at, just because I talk to my children every day doesn't mean they want to really hear what I have to say. And <laughs> God knows poor Hadassah doesn't want to hear what I have to say anymore. But it's, it's amazing. There's a bunch of young entrepreneurs or people that I mentor who want to hear me pontificate and suggest things and will actually listen or pretend to listen where my kids and, you know, <laughs> don't want to even pretend, <laughs> pretend to listen. No, but all kidding aside, for, for, for entrepreneurs, you know, encourage entrepreneurs, whether they're young or you're starting in your 40s or 50s, you want to start a new career. People in Detroit, it's not, go to the coast. Everything is, when you go to the coast, either coast, everything's in a silo. I'm not sharing my, what I'm doing with you. I'm not sharing. I don't want to hear what you're doing. I don't want, you know, all that stuff. We're here. How can we help you? What can we suggest? What are your thoughts? Reach out to, you know, reach out to them. And, and, and people want, people really want to see you successful. It's, 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 it's really, really something it's, it's in our fabric. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that. So I was just, I was just thinking about something. So almost seven, eight years ago, you know, I was buying office buildings, Dennis, as you know, and I was, you know, I was expanding the right. office buildings. And, you know, we knew we were going to get back into the retail development business, which we've, you know, we're, you know, we're doing in 25, 30 states now. And brilliant, just brilliant what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, but so one of the people that's been instrumental, um, you know, and us being able to grow has been Brandon Schramm. And Brandon, you know, joined us seven, eight years ago. And how I met Brandon was, I didn't know, I didn't know him from Adam. Didn't even know, didn't know the name, didn't know the name or anything else of that nature. But he went to David Friedman and David Friedman said, listen, you know, what you're trying to do, you're, you're entrepreneurial, you want to grow a business, you want to, David made the introduction to me of Brandon and said, you, should, you, you guys should meet it. And that was an example of what this community is all about. You know, trying to help each other grow your businesses, trying to, trying to take it to the next level. And David made an inc incredible introduction. I, I probably should call David and you know thank him again for it. But he made an incredible introduction, both for me and hopefully Brandon says for him also. But you know, we've, you know, we've we've done we've done great together. But but I think the amazing thing is, as you look kind of intergenerational, you know, what you're talking about, Dennis. People really want to help each other out. You know, you really see people that are seasoned veterans want to help. You know, that those those young entrepreneurs, you know, take it to the next level, and, that, and that's pretty special. When you look at how you grew your business and how you expanded it. You know, I know it's a lot of networking. It's a lot of, you know, introductions and all that stuff. What was, what was the, um, you know, you know, what, what, what worked for you? How do you, you know, was it, was it the referrals? Like, how did, you know, how did it, how did it grow for you? How did you, you know, how'd you build your business to where, you know, what's, how would you describe it? It was it a little bit of the older generation helping you. I'm just curious. Two, 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 two words, two yeah. words. David Hermelin. When I moved to town, when I moved to town and I got involved in Federation, I met, I met David. And David saw I was a bright young, um, in, in the real estate finance business, David had real estate. And he met with me at the big boy, you know, this is the Jewish historical uh, society. So we all know about the big boy of Maple and, and, and Telegram. Um, you know, I couldn't believe it. The big boy's the power of breakfast place in Detroit, come on. <laughs> And I met with David and David said, I'm gonna give you an incredibly tough deal, but if you, if you figure it out and you stay involved in the community, I'm gonna help you and I'll introduce you. So I killed myself, Gabriel, to get that, that, that deal financed where other firms couldn't get it done or they didn't wanna mess with it because it was so difficult. And David then proceeded to take me around and introduce me to all of his friends and said, here's a bright young Jewish guy, part of our community. He's giving back, he's involved. Plus he's awfully good at what he does. And that was the networking that got me going. And that's just like when you started out, look at some of the people I introduced you to. You should partner with this guy or invest with this guy and so forth. Matt Lester did it the same way. Right. You know, I know, I, I, you know, Matt's an incredible success story. Yeah, his family was from here, but Matt went around and networked like crazy to, to and made sure that when he started out, he made sure his investors got their return before he got his return. 
And in the end, that 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 got loyalty. So what you have to do is you you have to um, you, you have to network. You can't be afraid of, and this prepared me for being married. Yeah, you can't be afraid to hear the word no. <laughs> um, you, 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 you have to um, you have to learn how to get stand back up again. You get knocked down a bit, and it's not it's the old saying: not how often you get knocked down, it's how often you get back up. And that's what entrepreneurs of any age have have to do. Where I was able to get successful, I was lucky. I, I, you know, besides Hadassah here, my in-laws, you know, because I didn't know anybody, I didn't have family here. My family was back in Cleveland. My in-laws, Naomi and I'm done writing, were they they totally accepted me as part of it. And in the early years, when it was when I just started out as a one operation, you know, they were I always knew they would be there. So family's important. To to to, you know, it was tough those first few years, but you keep at it and. Suddenly, the next thing you know, your son's pushing you out of the business. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. You know? <laughs> you know that. So I got I got to read you a quote, and, and and let me know what you think about this, Jared. I want to get your, you know, Jared. Let me know what you think. If I had a wish, it would be that I could play a part in translating my excitement of the beauty and joy of being Jewish, so that all our people could say, could see how rewarding life affirming, just plain fun living Jewishly could be. Dennis, who do you think said that quote? Did I say that? No, you didn't say that. <laughs> Thank God. I'll that would have been my guess. guess. That quote, that, 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 quote. Been, that <laughs> quote is David Hermelin. David, I never... saw, David taught me to see the beauty and the fun of being Jewish. You know, a lot of times, oh, we got this holiday, we got to do this and this. My kids and we never miss having Christmas. One day, are you kidding? We get to eat outside in the freezing cold and rain <laughs> in, in the in the fall. Are you kidding? We get to in the middle in, in the middle of uh, you know and the, near the end of winter when you're tired, we get to dress up and eat home intoxins and win a goldfish. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you that. David, and I, and I, so, David was so important, but that's a great message that that it, as parents and as, as 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 members of our community, we we have to constantly remind people it's fabulous and fun being Jewish. It's, it's it is it is so so cool being Jewish. So in and how I looked up that quote, I never met David Hermelin, but I've heard you speak about him. I've heard you know my friend Lyndon speak about him. My, you know Kara, you know my my mom speak about David. And I never, and I never met him. So one day I Googled David Hermelin and his obituary came up and this is in the New York times obituary. And I read that quote, I go, wow, that sums it all up, right? That, that sums up, you know, the beauty of being Jewish and, you know, and, and, and everything that comes with it. So I will send you that quote. Absolutely. Just, I, I can't tell you. And, and um, Lorraine has been so kind to me and Hadass over the years, whenever we see her quite a bit, we run, you know, in community stuff. And she would say, David would be just so proud of you. And that means so much to me of, of the fact that I was yeah. I became successful in business, but more so the family man and the community and giving back. And uh, I can think of no greater um, uh, compliment to be, uh, you know, to be part of David's amazing network. That's amazing. That's, you know, that's, that's amazing. You know, there's a... You know, King Solomon said in Hebrew, he said, Hashem velo Hashem, right? Right. And Hashem velo Hashem and King Solomon, what it is, it's your name and not the oils. And it's about your name. It's about, that's, that's what King Solomon said, it's about your name. It's about, not, not the, it's, it's what you do with your name. How do you give? How are you philanthropic? How do you give back to your community? Not, um, you know, not the rest, the rest is nonsense. Look, and, look, look it, it's, 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 it, it, it's a lot easier to make money and to be successful in business than it is to have that three-legged stool Absolutely. where you are successful in family, community, and business. And you have, when, when, when um, I think at the end of the day, nobody ever said, you know, I wish I worked harder. They say, I wish I'd given back more. I wish I had made a greater impact on my community and family. I wish I'd been a better husband or father or brother. 
you know, things like that. It, so the, 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 the great thing about, about being Jewish, we get to start that at any age. We get to, to, every year we get to start all over and say, you know what, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write something different this year. That's amazing. That's great. Oh. Dennis, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. This was uh, fantastic. Great information. No, th th thank you guys. And, and, and once again, Kara, thank you for thinking to invite me. I still think you could have found someone else who, but I am just glad we didn't wear our hair the same way tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dennis, you, you exemplify everything that, that, you know, Jewish entrepreneur who's done amazing things in the community and continues to do so, continues to give back. And, you know, we truly appreciate you being our, uh, our first guest on, uh, on this interview thank, series. Jerry, th thank you. And thank you for sponsoring. And, and Gabriel, thank you for sponsoring. Both of you guys have such good thriving businesses. Love, love to see it. And I am just, I really am, Kara, I now truly feel that I am part, you know, years from now, that I, I, will, I will be remembered as, as really a member of this incredible Detroit Jewish community. Well, you have definitely made your mark. And if you have a few more minutes, we will open it up in case there are any questions from everyone in our audience. If you wanna submit those via the chat feature, if anyone has any additional questions we haven't covered tonight, um, I think Dennis would be happy to answer them. All right. Well. Well, I I think that that about covers it. I'll, you know, I'll hand it back to uh, Gabe and Jared for our closing remarks. Well, that made me feel good. They had no questions. <laughs> covered everything, Dennis. That's what happened. Yeah, you, you really did. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did such a good job. And I'll tell you, the whole time my mom was texting me, like, asking about entrepreneurship, asking about entrepreneurship. And you just, you talked a lot about entrepreneurship. So <laughs> this is Rothberger. Jared's, Jared's figured it out. It just, and then one day, Jared, you keep your head down, and one day you look up and say, holy cow, not so bad. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you. Dennis, thank you so much. Jared, go ahead. Thank you all very, very much. We really appreciate you guys sponsoring this program. We look forward to next month's offering, which we will uh, let all of our attendees know about and all of our members and friends know about as soon as possible. And Dennis, thank you again for being our first interview in this series. We really, really appreciate it. I thank always wanted to be someone's first. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye, thank, thank you. Thank you.